So we start with sales ledger control account. Yeah, we start already. So no, I'm not starting. We're just going to the question. So we have the items already. The items that goes to the debit side and the items that go to the credit side. Yes, sir. We have the sales on the debit side. We have sales returns on the credit side. We have uh, receipt from credit customers, which is from that's cash. Mm -hmm. These are payments that you receive on the debit side, on the credit side. This other check will be on the debit on the credit side. Mm -hmm. Refers to credit customer debit side. Debit side. Recoverable debts on the debit side. Interest charge on the debit Recoverable side. Recoverable debts in the credit. Which one? Recoverable debts in the credit side. Yeah, on the credit. That's what I said because it's an expenses. You said, said that. No. I said on the credit side. Uh, e coming with debt on the credit side. That's what I said. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So we have this transaction. Yeah, they said, Shota maintains a full set of accounting records and prepares the control account at the end of each month. She provided the following information. Say, send your control account balance. That means we have a debit balance. So balance brought down. On the, that's on the debit side for 1,200. The sales journal, which is the sales no, on the debit side. side 4890 mm -hmm. and we have sales returns journal credit. that will be on the credit side. Check and bank transfers received from credit customers. You receive yeah. cash and bank, those are going to be on the credit side of the sales control account. I think that is clear. Wait, this is David. You receive Ch checks and bank transfers received. Yes, David. On the credit side, checks and bank received on the debit side. Mm -hmm. David or credit, I mean, just confused. Check and bank transfers on yes. the credit side, you receive it. This is your sales ledger control account. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever you receive. Whatever they give. Yeah, whatever you receive stays on your credit side. Yes. Not your ledger here. Mm -hmm. It's a control account. Yes. Are you with me? Yes, it's not. Okay. So the sales returns, you receive those goods, on return goods. So it stays, it's a credit balance. Okay. All right. So we have the cash. We talked about cash, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, discount allowed to credit customers. Discount allowed will be on the on the credit side of your control account. Cash received from credit customer. Credit side. On the credit yeah. side. Cash refund is the debit side. Cash refund, yes, yes. On the debit side, because you return that cash. As soon as there's a sales return, so there should be cash refund. Yes. When there's a sales return, there should be cash refund mm -hmm. sometimes. Yes, yes. Most of sometimes customers will just return those goods because they are more than what they are supposed to have. But if customers be, uh, requested for a refund for their money, you have to refund it. It stays on the debit side of your yes. control account. So that's what we have. So we have things we have on the debit side. We have the balance brought down. We have the balance brought down. Mm -hmm. We have the sales. We have zonal check. We have the zonal check and we have cash refund. Those are the things on those are the items on the debit side. Yes. And on the credit side. We have the rest of the items. So the difference between the debit side and the credit side gives us our balance carry down. Yes. So that's yeah. about that. So balance brought down of 1825 will be the balance brought down for the next, year. For the next month. Month or yeah. yeah. So go, I think that is clear. Yeah. <laughs> so for your sales for your sales control, for your sales ledger control account. What you have there, you have your balance brought down, the debit balance, you have your sales, you have your balance, this is not check. So that you see, you see which comes from your cash book, you have your cash refund still on your cash book. Bank on the debit, bank. on the credit side, yes? This on bank. This on check. check. Yeah, it's on check. Yeah, it's on the, from the cash book. Yeah. The bank side, the bank column of the cash book. Debit side. Debit side, from your cash book, debit side here. On the credit side of your sales return or sales control account, you have the amount of money paid to your, your check, your cash balances, your sales returns, you have your recoverable debts and your discount amount. Done. Yes. So go to your purchases ledger control account. For purchases ledger control account, we're talking about the total uh, the total trade payables account. Mister, is it the same? It's not the same. I mean, like, but uh, it's the same as uh, sales, like, just switch it over. You are going to switch now. Yeah. All whatever you have on the debit side will be on the credit side. Will be on the credit side. Yeah, so. Because I've, I've noticed it. it's like look. Yeah, you just get it. So yeah. for your purchases layer control account, the format will be purchases returns on the debit side. Yes. Uh, cash and bank on, on the, the debit, debit side. side. Discount received yeah, yeah. on the debit allowed, side. Yeah. On the credit side, you have the balance now. The balance go down. Your debit uh, your balance. Yes. Be on the credit side, your purchases will be on the credit side. Interest, Interest charged 
then the, we yeah. found and it's quite size. Uh, we found and this one is check. This one again. This is not check. Yes, and the if there is, yeah. If there is. I think that is clear. Yes. So the items we have the purchases, which is purchases journal, purchases returns from the purchases returns journal. We're talking about the source document. Mm -hmm. We have the payments to credit suppliers, which is in the cash book, it's down to the credit side book. of the cash book. This comes to see from credit suppliers on the credit side of your cash book. Yes. Then we have refunds from credit supplier, which credit goes to your debit side of the cash book. Refunds yes. from oh, credit suppliers. Yes. It's the debit side of your cash book. Do you know that? Yes. The interest charge overdue for overdue account yeah. is from the journal. So we have the transaction. Purchases ledger control account balance, that's the credit, it goes to your debit credit side of your purchases ledger control account. Purchases on the credit side, purchases returns on the debit side, check and bank transfers. Are you there with me, please? Yes, sir. Check and bank transfers on the, de on the debit side. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we've talked about that. What else do we have there? We have a uh, discount received on the debit side. So that's all we have. The interest, check refund, check refunds mm -hmm. on, the on the credit side. Interest charge on overdue account yes. on the credit side. Then the difference will give us our balance carry down. I think that is clear. Yes. So that's how we prepare a sales and purchases ledger control account. Now, let's say we have balances on both sides of our control accounts. So that means you can prepare both accounts together. Are you with me? Yes. Occasionally, a credit customer account may show a credit balance. This may occur due to one. So why will your credit customer, how will your credit customer be having a credit balance? Your credit customer should have a debit balance, yes or no? Yes. But here they said, occasionally credit customer's accounts may show a credit balance. What would have meant that your credit customer is having a credit balance? It means you are owing your credit customer. What happens? How? Return. Refunds. Let's check. So One, an overpayment by the customer. Overpayment. Yeah. So if the customer has paid you more than his, his or invoice, that's one of the reasons why your customer, your customer is supposed to have a debit balance. Yes, yes, yes. Do you get it? In your sales control account, your customer's account is supposed to be a debit balance mm -hmm. because the customer is owing you. But if it's having a credit balance, it means you are owing your customer. So what are the instances? That would make you to be owing your credit customer. Yes. So the, one of the reasons are one. One of the reason is when the customer overpay its account. Yes. So the invoice might be five hundred dollars, and the yes. customer paid maybe seven hundred dollars. So the customer will be having a credit balance. That's the first reason. Two, yes. the customer returning goods after paying the account. Yes. So, sales returns. Yes, sales returns. So, that would be a, yes. That would be another reason why your credit customer would be having a credit balance. The third one. A customer paying in advance for the goods. Yeah. Advance payment. Prepaid. It's it is prepaid. We paid, yeah, prepaid. you got it. We paid, yeah. And the last one is cash discount not being deducted from before payment was made. So if the customer is having a cash discount and it yeah. has not been deducted yes. before it makes the payment. So that means you are owing the customer. So these are the reasons why you might still be owing your customer as a business. The customer will have paid his invoice or an invoice mm -hmm. to. There's a discount that has not been deducted, cash discount that has not been deducted mm -hmm. before the customer made the payment. There's a so there's a return inward that you have not been deducted, and also the customer has, has paid before those goods have been. Yeah, yeah. So that those are the reasons why we could have um, a credit balance in our customer's account. So when this happens, what what will you do? Let's say Shweta maintains a full set of accounting records and prepares control accounts at the end of each month. She provided the following information. Sales ledger control account balance, total of for the months. Sales journal, sales returns, check and bank receipt from the credit customer, discount allowed to credit customer, interest charge, sales ledger credit balances. So there's a, sale, there's a credit balance here. Mm -hmm. So the credit balance goes to the credit side of the sales ledger control account. Yes. Normally, you're not supposed to have a credit balance. But it will be in the end. Yeah, at the end of May. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the transaction. Do you understand? Yes. So how do we prepare this sales ledger control account? We have our balance well down mm -hmm. for 1825. Mm -hmm. Then we have your sales. Yeah, these are the sales transactions for 4910. 4, we have sales returns on the credit side. 
checks and bank transfers on the credit side, discount allowed on the credit side, interest charged on the debit side. Then you have them together. Then we have what again we have there? The sales credit balances will be on the credit side at the end of each one, at the end of the month. Sales ledger balances. Mm -hmm. You are only your customer one owner 15. You have to add it all together. Do you get it or not? Yes, sir. So you add all together. The difference is your balance carry down, mm -hmm. so which goes to the 1st of May. So your 1st of May will be having your credit balance of 115 and the debit balance of the difference. Yes. Do you get the credit balance of 115? 115, yes. And the debit balance of the difference between the debit side and the credit side. Yes, you get Is it clear? Yes. Okay. The balance always, if you owe someone, it will always be a debit side. If you are owing your customers on the credit side. No, in the sales ledger. On the credit side, at the balance. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if uh, when you enter the transaction, if they give you the balance. And, you know, it, when you are owing your customer, yes. it will be at the end of the financial, at the end of the month. Yeah, I know, I know. So at the end of the month, it stays as your balance carried down on the credit side. Yes, but I mean, like this, why does it give us uh, carried down, balance carried down at the debit side? Yeah, because this is the amount of money you are owing. I have to, uh, it's still sum up with your balance. It, mm -hmm. On your sales ledger control account, the amount you are owing your customer will still be on the debit side. Yes. It is when you, are, when you finish your transaction that it goes to your credit side. At the end of the transaction, it stays on the credit side. But you still have to add it up to the balances you have on the debit side. Mm -hmm. yes, Do you know that on the debit side of your transaction, these are all that you have paid out. And this amount that you are owing your customer was due because of sales. Yes or no? Yes. It was due because of sales. Yes. So it's still going to be on your credit debit side. But at the end of the month, it goes to your credit side and balance go down. Is it clear now? Yes. Okay. So in a similar way, a credit supplier account can show a debit balance. So your supplier's account can also show a debit balance. The opposite. So. Yeah. So if it, if your credit if your supplier's account is showing the debit balance, that means your supplier is owing you. So you owe me, yeah. Your supplier is owing you. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why your supplier might be owing you is that you have overpaid your supplier. It's the same point. Opposite. The opposite always. Yes. First and sales. It's like the Control account is opposite. Yes. Yeah, more than op it's opposite. Mm -hmm. When you return goods to your suppliers after paying for the account, it's going to be. It's going to be an overpayment. It's going to have a debit balance in your purchases account. Yes. Paying suppliers in advance, like prepayments, advance payment, yeah, prepayment, cash discount not being deducted. These are all going to be the reasons why you have a debit balance in your supplier's account. Okay. Yes. So now we are, we're talking about contract. When we're talking about contract entries, it means this transaction is going to be both in both in the control account sales. It's going to be both in the sales control account and the purchases control account. This transaction. Yes. The transaction is going to be on the debit side of your sales account and it's going to be on the credit side of your purchases account. That's what we call contract. It's going to reflect in the both double, sales double. ledger control account and purchases ledger the control account. The double entry will be between sales and purchases. The double entry. Yes. Not double entry. There will be no double entry. This is not double entry. It, it, everything is double entry. And but what I'm telling you is that Contract entry means that transaction is going to reflect on both the debit, it's going to reflect in the debit side of your sales ledger control account and on the credit side of your purchases ledger control account. Or the, purchase, the credit side or the debit side of your purchases ledger control account and the credit side of your sales ledger control account. That's all called contract. Yes. Contract will be if it is if it's a debit on the purchases ledger, it will be credit. On the sales ledger. If it is credit on the purchases ledger, it will be debit on the sales ledger. That's what we call contract. Mm. So here they say contract entries are also known as interledger transfers or setups. It happens, it may happen that a business sells goods to another business and also buys different goods from that business. So, like that, like now you you sell to me. I bought from you on credit. Yes. And you happen to buy from me too. Maybe you buy some sales from me. So we set up. That's what we call setups. 
So the amount owing is cancelled. Yes. That is if it's cancelled. Maybe you are owing me 300, but you bought you are owing me 300 and I bought goods of 170 from you. So the setup is 130. Mm. Yes, yes, That's what we're talking about. So let's see how it works. This means that there will be two ledgers accounts for that business. One in the sales ledger and one in the purchases ledger, like I told you. Rather than each business sending the other a check to cover the amount due, they may agree to set one account off against the other. So instead of writing, instead of writing separate ledgers, we only use one ledger for that transaction. So we just have a contract. So rather than each, okay, any remaining amount will be settled by one business issuing the check. So I'm only you 300, you bought goods of 170 for me. So I'm just going to set you up with 130. That is the point. Yes. So let's see how we prepare it. Shweta provided the following information. Sold goods $190 on credit to Marcin Road Stops. Bought goods 320 on credit from Marcin Road Stop. The balance of the two accounts for Marcin Road Stops were set up and Shweta sent a check for the remaining balance. So look at what happens there. The sales ledger would have sales of 190, right? Yeah, we have sales and purchases ledger at the same time. Mm -hmm. They said sold goods 190 on credit to Martin's account, right? Yes. So Martin's old store is there is the nominal ledger there. Mm -hmm. So the debit side we have the sales 190. Yes. At the same time, we bought from Martin's store for 320. Yes or yes, no? Yes. Yes. So we have it for Martin's store. Our sales ledger we have the purchases ledger for 190. Yes. And the difference is 190 minus 320. That goes to your purchases ledger. Do you get it? Do you get it or not? No. Okay, look at it. We have, we're going to have sales ledger account. I'm going to have purchases ledger mm -hmm. for massing. We bought mass, we sold to massing and the same time we bought for massing. Yes or no? Yes. Good. So the first transaction is about sales, which is 190. We sold to Marcin. We bought uh we sold to Marcin goods worth of $190, $190 right? Yes. Marcin received. So there's gonna be a debit balance for Marcin for $190. Marcin Road is our customer. Yes. We sold to Marcin Road. Yes or no? Yes. Goods worth of $190. At the same time, we purchased from Marcin. We purchased from Marcy goods worth of $320. Uh, 320 we purchase from Marcy goods worth of 320. Yes. Yes or no? Oh, yeah. Isn't it? Yes, yes. All right. So that is the transaction for 15th of May. Mm. Leave the transaction there. Then you go to your purchases ledger. Forget about the purchases ledger yet. You don't need that now. Yeah. So we go to purchases ledger. And our purchases ledger, where we have Marcy, which we bought from, purchases will be on the credit side. Yes or no? We bought, we bought from Marcy. Yes. Massey sold to us. That means we purchased from Massey 320. Ah, uh, I know, I get it now. So, for example, sales so or your uh, buy. When we bought for Massey, yes. we have a debit entry for Massey 320. Sales. Oh, uh, yeah. 190. 190. We sold to Massey goods worth of 190. Mm -hmm. Now we purchased from Massey. Yes, yes, I guess. We purchased from Massey goods worth of 320. So you see. The, now the credit side we have purchases there, yeah? In the sales account, the sales in the account. sales account where we have sales, you're going to have purchases ledger. In the in the purchases ledger where we have purchases, we're going to have sales ledger. Yes, yes, I get it. Yeah. Do you get it now? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the transaction. So for purchases, for the purchases account, we have our purchases ledger. Yes. We have one ninety. Yes. You know, it is we have this account is for massing. Yes. This is Marcin's account, right? For Marcin's account, we're going to have our purchases ledger for that sales. Purchases, yeah. Purchases ledger, not purchases, purchases ledger mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. 190. So it can eliminate the sales. That's it. Yeah, we can balance it yeah, because it's Marcin's account. And then you still uh, owe. Now, now we purchase from Marcin for 320. You still owe Marcin and I want it. That's it. We purchase from Marcin. Mm -hmm. 320 worth of goods. Now, the debit side of Massey purchases ledger. Yes. We have our sales ledger, mm -hmm. in, which is 190. 
and we have to issue a check. The difference between the sales and the purchases is one thirty. That is the check we are going to issue. Yes, yes, again. No, I get yeah. Because like uh, when you sell sold for him by one ninety, you purchase it with three twenty. So you uh, the difference. Yeah, the difference is what goes to your ledger account. Yeah. Which you have to issue a check or cash. Mm -hmm. Do you get it or not? Yes, yes, I get. Okay, we move on. So now we have a question here. Mm -hmm. This question contains both sales ledger and control account. So Shweta provided the following information for the month. Sales ledger control account debit balance, sales ledger control account credit balance. Both one will be at the beginning and one will be at the end. Mm -hmm. I think that is clear. Yes. Purchases ledger control accounts, credit 218. So we have sales, we have purchases, we have sales, we have purchases returns, we have checks and bank transfer received. Yes. Received is part of the sales. Paid yes. is part of purchases. Discount received, purchases. Irrecoverable debt, sales. Yes. Discount received yeah. is purchases. Yes, yes, Discount yes. allowed is sales. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Irrecoverable debt. Irrecoverable debt uh, is uh, in credit. Sales. In the credit. Sales. Sales. Irrecoverable debt. Yes. It's your sales account. Yes, yes. Irrecoverable debt is your sales account. Yes or no? Yes. Sales account. Yes. Yeah. It is charged by credit supplier purchases. Contract yes. entry. Supplier. Both transactions. Yes or no? Yes. Now, they said we should, we're going to find the sales ledger control account debit balance. We're going to find purchases ledger control account credit balance. And purchases ledger control account debit balance is 135. So the transactions are this. So your balance brought down would be 1,850. Our total sales is 5,360. Done. Then whatever transactions do we have again? The rest transactions are on the credit side of our sales ledger. Yes. The balance brought down 115 returns. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Thank you. The bank, the amount of money we received, the irrecoverable debt, the contract. I think you know what the contract is now. Contract of 190. 190 for the previous one. It's a contract. It's going to be both in the debit side and the credit side. Contract will be on the credit side of our sales ledger. It will be on the debit side of our purchases ledger. Oh, uh, yeah. It's contract. Yes, so Mr. Repeat, in the exam, they will give it to you like this. Yes. Contract, yeah. Yes. So we now prepare the purchases ledger. Purchases return, bank, discount received, the contract now. Mm -hmm. Then the balance, the purchases, interest charge, and the balance. That's so, all about the transaction. Yeah. It's easy. Is it clear? Yes, it is. Your contract we have a credit transaction, credit on the sales, on the sales on the and purchases, debit, and the debit on the purchases. And the, uh, vice versa, yeah. Vice versa. So what you have to do, the question mark about the debit and the credit is the balance brought down and the balance carried down. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about it? No. So let's do this exam side question. We have five minutes. First question, what is the purpose of preparing the sales ledger control account? Uh, yes, D, to check uh, the arithmetical accuracy of the sales ledger account. Thank you. Question two. What may appear on the debit side of a purchases ledger control account? Debit side of the control. Uh, yeah. Debit side. Wait. Uh, return. It's D. Returns by credit customers. Uh -huh. Suppliers. Payment. Wait. Suppliers. It's C. C. Yes, C. Because I, I didn't read it all because it's returns. I thought it was returns. Yeah. Question three. Yeah. Should pass sales ledger control account add an opening credit balance? What does this mean? Opening credit balance. Yeah. Sales account opening. Oh, yeah. Total amount owing by customer. Credit customers. Yeah, thank you. Total amount owing by credit customers. No? It is not. It is D. Overpayment made by credit customers. Yeah, overpayment, yeah. Question three is D. Question four. 
Oh, this mm. one is going to take time. So yeah. we we'll stop here, please. Yes. Okay. Yes.